What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and today I wanted to do a fun little playthrough. <laughs> this is a game called Stardew Valley which is available for PC and Nintendo Switch and like so many different platforms, even mobile. And it's a game that I truly love. Like I have 400 plus hours in Stardew Valley just on Steam alone, not including my Nintendo Switch version that I have on the Switch Lite and then using cloud saves. I play on the TV and then sometimes I play in bed. It's really, really, really one of my favorite games. And I wanted to share it with you guys. This game is available on like every platform and it's always on sale. Don't care who you are. Watch this. Buy this game. It's one of the most fun things. And what I want to do is something called the one year challenge for the community center. In this game, there's a large building that basically has a very, very, very wide selection of items that you need to gather everything and put it in the community center. And that unlocks different things. And it's essentially like you're end game, which you're kind of expected to do by the end of year two, but to do it by the end of year one requires some really advanced planning. People on the Stardew Valley Reddit have talked about this challenge. Uh, some people have posted about it, but I don't think anyone's ever made a guide. So I just did it for the first time and I just kind of wanted to do it with you guys and show you how it works and I don't know, do this playthrough. If it takes off, I'll finish it. If not, I'm going to delete it from my YouTube history. <laughs> You're not going to see these videos anymore. I don't know. I am playing on Steam and I'm playing vanilla modded. Really, there's only one mod that I just love and makes my life easier, which is called automate. Basically, whenever there's like a furnace and a chest and the chest has everything the furnace needs to smelt, it'll just do it automatically. It'll collect the item, it'll smelt the next thing, so on and so forth. I have another mod that lets me just harvest, harvest things with a scythe because it's a little bit faster. Something that tells me what villagers like in regard to their gifts and then the tractor. But that's late game and I usually don't even get that in year one. Oh, and the Skull Cavern Elevator. That's something to talk about at the end of the game, too. There are two websites that I use as tools in addition to the wiki. There is Stardew Community Checklists, which basically helps me track all of my bundles. And then there's a something called the Stardew Predictor on mousypounds.github. And that lets me know some important information and I'm going to be talking about that later. First things first is we got to pick our character and I'm just going to pick some random stuff here. My favorite thing is hot sauce. I'm going to choose dog as my animal preference. We're going to go with dog number two. And in regard to the farm, I've done pretty much every farm that there is. I think I'm going to go with hilltop just because, uh, it is so sexy. Just the layout and then what you could do with it with the trees and everything else. Yeah, I'm going to go with hilltop just because I want to. And we're going to skip the intro. I'll give you kind of like a little summary on what's going on. Your character, he works a dead-end job at a major corporation called Joja, which is supposed to be either Amazon or Walmart, and he's super sick of it, and his grandfather died, and he, you inherit this farm, and then you start your game. Now, before we do anything, we actually have to use one of those websites that I was talking about, and this is the website, the Stardew Predictor. So when you start up your game, it basically creates a seed that tells the game a whole bunch of information, and there's one specific item that's needed that you can't get anywhere else other than the traveling cart. And that is red cabbage. And we can see right here that red cabbage is not going to happen on year one. So because of that, we actually have to restart the game already. So if you were to play the game now, it would be impossible to do the year one challenge on this playthrough. And my second attempt, I see the red cabbage seeds are available, but not red cabbage itself. All right, so interestingly enough, on summer the 14th and, oh, summer the 14th of year one, we could buy red cabbage seeds and we could still grow them that summer. So looks like that's gonna be our plan. I'm actually just gonna take this and put this over to the side. And then there's a few items that are just kind of helpful that if you can get them at the traveling card, but it's not really necessary. One of them being the pomegranate, one being a rabbit's foot. Truffle, ooh. Oh, so we can't get the actual truffle, only truffle oil. So yeah, that's not gonna work. So it looks like other than the red cabbage seeds, we're gonna be playing pretty much normally. Which, if you're not trying to do the one-year challenge, that's not something you need to know about at all. 
But if you're doing the one year challenge, then it's an absolute must. All right, so let's start off. I'm gonna move my TV right next to my bed. You check the TV every day for living off the land. I think that's Mondays and Thursdays. And then you learn different recipes on, I think it's Wednesdays and Sundays. I'm not 100%. We're also gifted 15 parsnips soon as we start off the game, which is really nice. And here is uh, everything. Now, you have a whole bunch of items right at the bottom. Here we have an axe, a hoe, a watering can, a pickaxe, and a scythe. The scythe is used to clear stuff out and requires no energy to use. So I'm actually going to be using the scythe a lot day one because I don't have any energy. Or right here is energy and you're gonna see it goes by really, really fast. And here's our water source. If you look at the screenshot, you can see that our water source is this big lake that goes throughout the entire farm. And that's how we're going to be getting all of our water. What's unique about this farm is that we have this area down here on the left, which has a whole bunch of ores that spawn regularly. There's also increased artifact spots, which is these little things right here. They kind of look like worms. A lot of people call them worms. Uh, there's a lot of copper here, and this right here is a geode, so that's actually er, two geodes. This is a fantastic start for our hilltop. So our priorities for day one in this game are we're going to clear out a small area right here. That way we can plant our parsnips. Every time that I swing my axe or any of my tools, my energy is going to go down. And when you first start off the game, it goes down by a lot. One of the reasons I prefer PC over the Nintendo Switch version is that I can actually stand in one place and then choose where I want my tool to hit. We're going to cut down this tree and you're going to see our energy is just flying down. We plant our parsnips. And we water them. Now just this little bit of stuff and cutting down that one tree we're already down to like three fifths of our energy level. So now you can see why I was saying how energy conservation is so important in this game. When clearing out bushes and stuff, you have a small chance to get mixed scenes, which is basically just like free stuff to grow, which is fantastic, which saves you money on seeds and is super helpful in the early game. And oh boy, there is a bunch of stuff here. Oh, three mixed seeds from that artifact spot. That's beautiful. That's clay. That's boring. More clay. That's boring. I've never seen that many spawn here. More mixed seeds. Oh, and our first artifact. This is a rusty spur. So we're actually going to be able to donate this on day one. That's a geode. And my inventory is already full. Okay. Something nice is that this item isn't going to just immediately despawn. And because my inventory is full, I actually need to get 50 wood. That way I can have a chest made up. And when it comes to the amount of energy that it takes to chop down a tree and the amount of wood that you get for it, super early game, you should only chop down the top, not the bottoms. So until we have like a better foraging level and it doesn't take too much energy to chop down a tree, we're just gonna chop down the tops. Great, that puts us at 55 wood. That's enough for us to make a chest. Here's our crafting menu. There's a chest. And for now, I'm just gonna toss that off. That's also something unique to PC is that you could just toss it off screen. We got our first geode from that geode spot. We can pay to have those cracked open and there might be artifacts inside or special geodes or coal and a whole bunch of stuff. Breaking open these copper stones is taking a lot of energy. A lot of energy. And we're already starting to feel exhausted. That's that's day one in Stardew Valley. I'm down to six energy. So just to prevent misclicking, you should always stick with your scythe as your main weapon because, or your selected item, because if you happen to accidentally click, it doesn't take any energy. And if you run out of energy, you become exhausted. These little patches of grass, these are considered weeds, but also these rocks and these pieces of wood are also considered weeds. And every day that there's a weed, the weed has a chance of spreading as to one of the other items. They're good and bad at the same time because, well, you get, you know, 
four mixed seeds just from this little walk here today. And anyone who's played Stardew Valley, you know that one of the most important things to do is just hoard everything. I'm serious. You never know when you're actually going to need things to be able to craft or for a community center and stuff like that. Only after playing for so many times do you actually have kind of an idea on the stuff that's important to keep and not important. This is also one of my favorite buttons that was added, add to existing stack. So when I click it, everything that's in my inventory that's also here will just pop up. Now it's already 4.20 p.m., nice. And I have no energy left. So what we are going to do is we're gonna walk around and we're gonna start foraging for forageables. Forgeables are items that you're going to be finding on the grass or the pathway that are just going to actually give you a little bit of help. Some are flowers and they're a nice gift to give to people. Some are things like horseradish and you can eat it. And then also the world is inhabited with other people like this is Linus. He's homeless. A stranger, hello. And every time that you meet someone on your social tab, you'll see them here. And then one of my mods actually tells me what their favorite gifts are. Every week you can give someone two items, and then if it's their birthday, you could also give them a third item. There's like 18 people or something. Actually, I have a quest here. 28 people in the game that I need to introduce myself to. I have another quest to grow a parsnip, which we're already doing that. And this is actually a quest that I got from getting that uh, rusty spur. So, we gotta go get that. Look, it's another person to say hi to. Let's go say hi. So this is Robin. She owns the carpenter store up here, and she's in charge of building you farms and everything else. This is Demetrius, that's her husband. Robin had a son, and he's a video game programmer, and then she got divorced from her husband, and then married Demetrius, and they have a child together. It's a very progressive game. The more gifts that you give the villagers, the more their affection level is going to go up. Oh look, it's an item. Forgeable. It's a daffodil. So the daffodils are, it's a nice item to give, but if you eat it, it doesn't help you out. And right here is the community center, the bane of my existence. After I think it's the 5th or 6th of the month, we're going to be able to get access to go inside and start submitting items. And this early in the game, there's not really too much that we can do. For the community center, I mean. There's still a lot of stuff we could do. Here's Harvey's clinic. It's locked. Oh. Wow, I didn't realize how late in the day it was. Here's a calendar that shows me everyone's birthday, and also a bu bunch of festivals and stuff going on. And here's a help wanted board that I can get special quests. Oh, here's Maru. Maru is the daughter of the two people we just saw. And here are garbage cans. So if you click on it, there's a chance that an item is gonna be in there. Like that, it's a field snack and it gives us energy. That's literally perfect. Here's Penny and Penny's mom, Pam is in here, but she's an alcoholic. So she's at the bar. These are actual facts. Here's Clint, he's the guy who opens up geodes for us. And he's also an alcoholic. You can find him in the bar most nights. Down here is going to be the beach. And the beach has a whole bunch of forageables that we could get as well, like this clam. Here's another artifact spot, but because if I were to hit that with my hoe, uh, my energy would be at zero. Let's eat this field snack. And you'll see my energy go back up. Nice. Oh, and we got a lost book. The books give you a little bit of knowledge about secrets about the game. And something we want to do very, very soon is get 300 wood to repair this bridge because that sea urchin right there is worth a lot of money. And I want that money. And I want that sea urchin. We also need a sea urchin for the community center. Here's another daffodil. Two more garbage cans. Oh, that's an acorn. We could plant a tree with that. Let's head left again. Here's the barn where we get to buy barn animals once we have a barn. And I'm actually going to take this acorn and I'm going to plant it right here. Boop. Great. That acorn is going to let us grow a tree. And then we can harvest the tree. So here's the forest. It's a really big area. Oh, great. A horseradish. Nice. I'm able to pick that up with my scythe because of a mod to harvest with scythe. This episode, I'm going to be explaining things a lot and going into detail about a lot of things about kind of the basics, give you an understanding of what I'm doing here, uh, and less explaining moving forward. 
Here are spring onions. They're exclusive to spring and they grow in this area. They're good for a little bit of energy, not too much though. And I know that it's dark right now. There's different items in the game that'll actually make your character glow. It's actually getting pretty late, so at midnight you start to get a notification that it's getting late. I actually have a little bit of energy left over, so I'm just going to use that to chop down the chop tops of some trees before bed. So I'm going to sell off this clam and four daffodils, actually three daffodils. And then the rest I'm just going to be putting in this chest for tomorrow. And right into bed. And because of the trees that we dropped down, we actually increased our foraging skill. So now, plus one axe proficiency means that every time I swing my axe, instead of it taking two energy, it takes 1.9 energy. And now trees will sometimes drop their seeds. Great. And we could craft a field snack with one of each of the three tree seeds. And uh, wild seeds, you're never going to make those. And this page shows me the money that we made for farming day one, which wasn't great. Wake up, check the TV, weather report. It's gonna rain all day tomorrow, perfect. Any day that it rains, you don't need to water your crops. And because we busted open those copper stones and we got that copper, Clint is gonna give us the recipe on how to make a furnace. Yay, we got the blueprints, and now we can skip the cutscene. We could have skipped it from the beginning. I just wanted to show it off a little bit. And in order to make a furnace, we are going to need 20 copper ore and 25 stone. We have some mail. And Willie's telling us that we can buy a fishing rod, or get a free fishing rod from him. Nice. Here's an artifact spot. Boop. Nothing good. As soon as you wake up, it's important to go and make sure that you water your crops. Now, something I could have done last night that in hindsight I probably should have, these 11 mixed seeds, which is a lot of mixed seeds, we want to plant those because we could get some great stuff. Boop, 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 planting these seeds. So these seeds can be one of, I believe, four different crops. There's parsnips, I think potatoes. Let's check in our geode area. There's one more geode and some new copper. Great. Now these rocks, these shiny silver rocks actually give you experience. You get a little bit of experience and they always take two hits to destroy. Unless we upgrade our pickaxe, which we're gonna be doing at a later point in time. The reason we're clearing these out is because the less rocks that there are, which these are, con I think these are technically considered weeds and they can spread, but most importantly, they prevent the growth of things we actually want, like copper and um, artifact spots and geodes, things like that. I've read some places that these hoed up areas will actually prevent things from spawning there, but I don't know if there's any truth to that and we don't have enough energy to actually really care about it that much. Oh, we got two coal from that. Sweet. We could use coal for, uh, actually, we have all the ingredients for a furnace now, so let's make a furnace. Boop, furnace. Great. And I'm just gonna put the furnace right there. You need five copper in a furnace in order to smelt it, but we don't have five copper yet, so we're just gonna shove it in there, forget about it. Anytime you're on the pause screen or inventory screen, unless you're playing on multiplayer, the game is frozen in time. So you'll actually see the time kind of graying out and blinking. That lets you know that time is not passing, which is a good time to sort of collect your thoughts. So I can eat these spring onions for a little bit of energy, and I kind of want to clear the path in order to reach the trees better. However, we have some money. And early game money is very, very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the general store. Here's a daffodil. Yeet. Oh, and a leek. That's another one of the forageables that we need for the season. And here's an artifact spot. It's a lucky day for me. Look at all these people walking around. Make sure I greet all of them. Hi, Emily. Nice to meet you. Oh, and Abigail. She's Bay. On Tuesdays, all the women of town, they sort of meet up for like a workout class. And uh, here's where they pray to their fictional god. All hail Yoba. Ah, uh, and Marnie. Marty's in charge of all the animals. She's also having an affair with the mayor. Real stuff. 
Not a joke, by the way. So for springtime, the total crops we need is one parsnip, five gold quality parsnips, one green bean, one cauliflower, and one potato. However, what we're going to do is we're just going to buy all the potatoes that we can, and then that's going to help us maximize our profit margins. Every day that we can buy stuff. Oh, he's here's Haley. I like Haley. She's sort of like the blonde bimbo. Oh, you're the new farmer boy, aren't you? Huh? Oh, I'm Haley. If it weren't for those horrendous clothes, you might be actually cute. And then, if you try to initiate conversation again, there is no conversation to have, so they don't say anything, which is kind of interesting. Here, I have a flower. Anytime that you gift someone a gift, you'll actually increase their affection level with you. And you'll see that Haley is single, so if I wanted to, I could date and or marry her. That one gift actually isn't enough to even get me one heart, so that's the reason that uh, there's no hearts, but she's at the top. Let's get our watering pail and clear out a little bit of area for our new potato friends. While watering my crops, I'm down to 11 energy, which is not fantastic. That's the reason that we have these spring onions. We're just gonna munch on these. Nine. 27 still not great and something I want to do is I want to clear the path between my house and where I'm planting these crops Just so it's easier to walk here, and it's not so much of a maze And I also want to get to that 300 wood mark also something really weird is you can be at zero energy But it's technically somewhere between like zero and 0 0.9 So you won't be exhausted, but at the same time it won't show up as a number. Ooh, random geode. It's actually kind of rare. We've now hit a point that we're once again out of energy and it's not even nighttime yet, so we are going to head down to the forest and look for some more forageables and just generally all over town. Maybe rustle some garbage cans, see what we can find. And also something else that I really like about the PC version is you can have these zoom buttons here, which from time to time I'm gonna be zooming in and out. I wanna keep it zoomed in so you know, if you're watching this on your phone or something, it's not as zoomed out, but when it comes to times like this, when I'm sort of like looking at everything on the screen, I do like it seeing being zoomed out, especially while I'm in the mines. Also see these trees, these trees regenerate on their own. You don't need to replant them. The ones on your farm, you need to replant. Let's eat two of these dandelions. That doesn't sound delicious. Whenever there's a tree right next to water, it's important that you chop it down from this side, that way it falls that way. Because if you chop it down there, it'll fall this way, and some of the wood will be in the water, and uh, then you'll lose it. Like this tree right here, we actually might lose some of it to the water, but I think that bridge is going to help us out. Yep, lost a little bit. Not a lot, though. And with that, we actually have all four forageables of the season. The wild horse, radish, the leek, the dandelion, and the daffodil. Those four items are actually going to be used for the community center, for foraging for spring. Just then I broke open a stone and I got a geode. These regular stones here, if you destroy them because they're considered weeds, you don't get any experience, but if they contain an item like a geode or coal or something, then you actually do get experience, which is pretty nice. Oh, we've got some more mixed seeds. Nice, we'll take care of that tomorrow. And because the weather report tomorrow says that it's gonna be raining, that's good, because any day that it's raining is a day that we don't need to water our crops. Oh, and just from breaking open those stones, we increased our mining skill. Increases our pickaxe proficiency, so every time that we swing our pickaxe, instead of it taking two energy, it takes 1.9, and we can craft bombs. Sweet. Weather report tomorrow. It's going to be a clear and sunny day. Fun fact. The third of every spring year one, it will always rain. I think it's so uh, the game shows you this mechanic. Let's tend to our crops, plant our new mixed seed, and you saw that as soon as I hoed that patch, it was already moist. Nice. That way uh, we don't need to water the crops today, which is great. So all that energy that we would be spending on crop watering, we don't have to uh, worry about that. Up here, there's just one experience rock. Also, these big stumps right here, if I were to swing my axe at this, your axe isn't strong enough to break this log. Same thing goes for the pickaxe on those big rocks. We actually need to upgrade the quality of our tools. In addition to my 
axe proficiency going up at foraging level one, there's also a hidden advantage. And the hidden advantage is that you get slightly more wood every time you chop down a tree. And after chopping down some trees, we're once again pretty much out of energy. Can I eat anything? Yes, I can. These four maple seeds, if I grab four acorns and four pine cones, I could craft those together for field snacks, and then we could eat those, and that'll recover our energy. So we go from four to 49, which is pretty nice jump. The trees are helping us chop down more trees. Thanks, trees. Trees are bros. Hashtag team trees. And with that, that brings us to 300 wood, which is fantastic. Now we can go fix that bridge. Whenever you leave, always bring your hoe. Always, always, always bring your hoe because then you could find artifact spots. And if you hoe up the artifact spots, then there's a chance you could get some rare artifacts, including like some really, really amazing stuff that helps you out in the game. Oh, it's the cutscene with Willie. So Willie's a fisherman and he was away on a fishing trip or something and now he's back. And he basically gives us a fishing rod that we could fish with. This is a bamboo pole. It's not a good fishing rod, but it's a fishing rod and it's free. Ooh, oysters, we need that. Ooh, and a conkle. Cockle, need that. 300 pieces of wood to fix the bridge. You're gosh dang right. And now we can freely loot this area. Hooray. We got four coral, two sea urchin, nice. Ignore that guy. And it's still early enough in the day that we can actually come and sell these off to Willie. Hi, Willie. I would like to sell you these sea urchin and coral. 680, ugh, that's nice. While we're here, might as well start fishing a little bit. We have 25 energy every time that we cast. Brings us down to 17, so that's eight energy per cast. The higher your fishing level, the further you're gonna be able to cast. In addition, the larger your fishing bar is going to be. And in order to catch the fish, you just need to make sure that the fish stays inside of the green bar. And if it stays in the green bar the entire time, you get a perfect score. And when you get a perfect score, it increases the quality of it. And uh, you see how it's a gold star sardine. At that time we got seaweed. Fishing in the early game is really nice for being able to get your experience up for it. You could sell the fish off. You could eat the fish to fish more. The closer that your rod is to any sort of landmass, the lower quality the fish is going to be, but the further away it is, the better quality it's going to be. Like that was a regular quality. That first one was gold, so it was silver, but then the perfect increased its quality to gold. Oh, this is a lively one. This ain't no sardine. Ah, we got an eel. Nice, because it's raining, it's spring, and... Uh, it it's nighttime. That's actually one of the ex, uh, special fish. Oh, and I didn't pay attention. Now we're overexerted and we're exhausted. You can tell by that little blue face right there. This looks like another eel. Oh, and a treasure chest just spawned. Okay, can I reach them both? Nope. So sometimes you'll see it. Oh, catch it, catch it, catch it. Come on. Sometimes you'll see a treasure chest, and when you do, you still have to catch the fish, and then you get the treasure. We got this. What do we get? What do we get? Six copper ore, not bad. So sardines are needed for the community center, so we're gonna make sure we keep one. We're gonna sell the gold quality one. We need one eel for the community center, and we need the cockle and the oyster for the community center. So we're actually making pretty good pace. The seaweed is gonna be used for cooking and some other stuff later on. There's actually one ingredient that needs to be cooked. It's called a maki roll. And for that, you need an upgraded house. You also need a fried egg. There is a small chance that the traveling merchant could sell those two things. And there's also a chance that Gus, the local bartender, can actually sell those things. We're gonna put the soggy newspaper in there for now. Grab one piece of coal, and we're going to smelt our coal in our furnace. Or smelt our copper in our furnace. And after it's done, you're gonna see an icon right above it. We are actually going to move this, and thanks to the automate mod, if we just put that next to this, it's gonna automatically take out copper and coal and smelt it for us, which is pretty sweet. I just consider that kind of a quality of life mod. It is a little cheaty, but eh. Compared to all the mods out there, it's nothing. And we're exhausted and we're going to head to bed. Actually, 
So I'm going to be wrapping up this episode. Guys, thanks for checking out episode one of my Stardew Valley playthrough. I hope it was a lot of fun. It's actually kind of dark here. Let's just... Great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this has been episode one of Stardew Valley. I'm probably going to just go right into recording the next one for tomorrow, day four. And we'll take it from there. Uh, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more episodes, do me a favor, hit the like button down below. If you're enjoying this game, considering purchasing it for Steam or Nintendo Switch or mobile, whatever you want. And until uh, next time, Austin John out.